In this video, we're going to solve a variance problem covering direct materials and direct labor. Let's start by reading the question. Green Corporation uses a standard cost system to track the cost of manufacturing their signature product, natural light, a light which allows users to simulate natural light. Their light has been shown to reduce depression in countries which experience shorter daylight hours. The company sells the product to retailers all over the world. The president would like to know if the standards set at the start of the year are appropriate given the actuals experience this period. The following information is available for the year end. And we can see description, standard and actual. So we've got units, standard is 5,000, actual is 6,000. Raw material cost per kilogram, $2 is the standard, actuals were $3. Kilograms per unit, we generally use 3 kilograms per unit, that's the standard, but our actual was 2.5 kilograms per unit. Direct labor cost per hour, $14 is the standard, $13 is the actual. Hours per unit, 2 hours is the standard, 2.5 hours is the actual, and then we have variable overhead, 100,000 standard, 110,000 actual. Fixed overhead, 90,000 is the standard, 85,000 is the actual. Now, Green Corporation uses a normal costing system and allocates their overhead based on direct labor hours. Most questions have some additional information that you're not supposed to use. So we always need to keep an eye out for that. Required, one, calculate the direct materials spending and usage variance. Two, calculate the direct labor's rate and efficiency variance. So we're doing direct materials and direct labor. We actually don't need the variable overhead. So I'm gonna put a line through something that I don't need. I already know I don't need it, so I'm gonna put a line through it. And the fixed overhead, put a line through it. The fact that they use a normal costing system, which indicates how to calculate the application rate for both the variable overhead and the fixed overhead, well, we don't need to know that. And they allocate their overhead based on direct labor hours. We don't need to know that for this question either. So I'm getting rid of the extraneous information. Now, you'll also notice that this question said direct materials spending and usage variance, but the direct labor they call a rate and efficiency variance. So are these two things totally different? And the answer is no. So this spending variance is equal to the rate variance. They mean the exact same thing. Think about it. The rate is your hourly rate that you pay your labor, but you're spending to get your workers to work for you. So spending and rate, they're identical. They mean the same thing. I don't know why in managerial accounting we decide to call these two things different because we shouldn't. They're exactly the same thing. Whether it's a rate variance or a spending variance makes absolutely no difference. In addition, when you're looking at the usage variance, that is equal to the efficiency variance. There's no difference. Think about it. I'm using my direct material, so I'm looking at how much I use. I'm using my labor, so I'm looking at how efficiently I use my labor. But the usage is looking at how efficiently I use my direct material. So these two things do not mean something different. And again, not sure why in managerial accounting we simply don't use the word efficiency variance and spending variance. Those are the two that kind of are my favorite. It makes absolutely no difference. So let's go back to number one, calculate the direct material spending variance, which is also similar to the rate variance or identical to the rate variance, and the usage variance, which is identical to an efficiency variance. Let's get started. And we're going to use a different approach than you would usually see in a textbook. In a textbook, they use something called the formula approach or the column approach. I find both of them difficult to remember and the fact that they use different short forms makes me insane. So I'm going to use what I call the diamond approach and I'm just going to use the same wording. 
So I'm going to do the price variance. So here they call it a spending variance, a rate variance, a price variance. They're all the same thing. All the same thing. So this is also the spending variance. And I'm going to do the usage variance. And by the way, I'm using a short form, VAR is variance. This is the same as the efficiency. Variance. And I'm going to use a totally different method that I call the diamond method. So I'm going to start by drawing what looks like a diamond. I'm going to do the same on both sides. Then I'm going to leave a goodly amount of space. I'm going to finish my diamond. And I'm going to leave some space and I'm going to start a half diamond. And then I'm going to leave some space. And then I'm actually going to do this. And you'll see why later. All right. So this is going to be my spending variance. And this is going to be my usage, which is also called efficiency. All right. Now, in the English language, the alphabet starts at A and it ends at Z. And it moves from the left to the right. So I'm going to use that concept to help me make sure that I put everything in the right place. So we're going to start off because we've got actual and standards. And A comes before S. So I know I'm going to do the actual. I'm doing a price variance. So I'm going to do the actual price. So notice I'm using a short form, AP actual price. A comes before S. So now I'm going to use S for the standard. So standard and then I'm going to do price. Why? Because I'm doing the price variance. So the actual price, the standard price. A to S. Now down here I'm going to do the actual quantity. So AQ, actual quantity. Well, why do I put the quantity down here? Because I started off in my diamond, and in my diamond, P comes before Q. So that's why I did the actual price in the diamond and the actual quantity at the bottom of the diamond. And I'm doing a price variance. Pretty straightforward. That actual quantity is going to be used up here. So I'm going to do actual quantity. And notice this, I did my price variance which starts with a P and now I'm doing actual quantity for the usage variance. I'm using quantity. Q comes after P. So I do all my P and then I move over and I do Q. If this is actual quantity on the left hand side of the usage diamond, then I'm going to do the standard quantity on the right hand side of the usage diamond. And again because A comes before S. Notice that I was able to carry this up. The actual quantity gets carried into the actual quantity. I should clarify that. The actual quantity from the price variance gets carried to the actual quantity in the usage variance. Well, I'm going to do the same with regards to the standard price. The standard price from my price variance is used in my usage variance at the bottom of the diamond. So this is going to be my standard price. That's all I need to do. I now just have to take the information from the question and fill in the blanks. So what is the actual price for the direct materials? So raw material cost per kilogram, the actual price is $3. The standard price is $2 and that's per kilogram. So I'm going to put $3 per kilogram in my diamond the middle of my diamond on the price variance and I'm going to put two dollars per kilogram under the standard price. I'm also going to carry that standard price down to my usage variance. 
So that is $2 per kilogram. Bottom of the diamond for my usage variance. Now, what is my actual quantity? Sometimes they give it to you and sometimes you have to calculate it. So let's look if we need to calculate the actual quantity. Nothing here tells me the actual quantity. So how do we calculate actual quantity? That is equal to the actual output. How many units did I actually produce multiplied by the actual quantity per unit. If I multiply these things together, it will equal the total quantity that we have used during this period. So the actual output is 6,000 units. And I'm going to multiply that by the actual quantity per unit, kilograms per unit, actual 2.5. 2.5 kilogram. What does that equal? 6,000 multiplied by 2.5 is equal to 15,000 kilograms. So like I said, sometimes they tell you what the actual quantity is and sometimes you have to calculate it on your own. So now I'm going to put 15,000 kilograms at the bottom of the price variance, but I'm also going to put 15,000 kilograms in the left-hand side of the diamond for the usage variance. So now I only have the standard quantity and this is where students screw up every single time. The standard quantity is not the standard quantity for how many you budgeted. This is the actual output multiplied by the standard quantity per unit. So different than we just calculated. Let's go back again. We just calculated the actual quantity, which was the actual output times the actual quantity per unit. I want to do the actual output, which is still equal, well, I'm going to calculate down here, which is still equal to 6,000 units, but I'm going to multiply it by the standard quantity per unit. Kilograms per unit standard is 3.0 kilograms. So I'm going to do the math. That is equal to 18,000 kilograms. We've got all the numbers here. So again, I want to remind you, the standard quantity is the standard quantity per unit multiplied by the actual output. So let's do the calculation. How do we do it? We take the actual price and multiply it by the actual quantity to get what we actually spent. We then take the standard price, multiply it by the actual quantity to get what we should have spent. So we're just going to do multiplication here. The multiplication here. And we're going to do the same thing in the usage. Multiply. Multiply. And then we just fill in the blanks below the second half of the diamond. 3 times 15,000 is equal to $45,000. 2 times 15,000 is equal to $30,000. $15,000 multiplied by 2 is again $30,000. And then 18,000 multiplied by 2 is equal to $36,000. So what does this all mean? Well, the price variance says to us, we actually spent $45,000. But had we followed our standards, we would have only spent $30,000. So is this good or bad for the company? Because we have to determine if the spending variance is favorable, which is good for the company, or unfavorable, which is bad for the company. So what do we look at in order to determine this? Well, we simply look inside the diamond. I'm going to put a box around it. We look inside the diamond. 
We say this was the actual price, $3. This was the standard price that we expected to pay, $2. Is it good or bad? And if it is bad, it is unfavorable. And if it is good, it's favorable. So we spent three, we should have spent two. This is bad, it is unfavorable. What is the amount of the unfavorable variance? We're going to take the difference between the 45 and the 30. 45,000 being what we did spend, 30,000 being what we should have spent. And the difference between these two is $15,000. So the spending variance is 15,000 unfavorable. Let's go over to the usage variance. In the usage variance, we're looking at what we used to produce the units that we did and what we thought we should have used based on our standards. Again, to determine whether it is favorable or unfavorable, we look inside the diamond and we say to ourselves, just a minute, I'm doing the box. We say to ourselves, this is the actual quantity, 15,000, and we thought we would use 18,000. Is this good or bad for the company? And the answer is, it's good for the company, which means it's favorable. What's the amount of the usage variance, which of course is also called the efficiency variance? Well, it's the difference between the 30,000 we calculated and the 36,000 that we calculated, so that is $6,000 favorable. So what does this mean? We did a good thing with regards to how efficiently we used the direct materials, and we did a bad thing with regards to how much we spent on the direct materials. The last thing we can calculate is the total direct material variance. This is also, I'm just going to move my sheet up a bit, this is also called the flexible budget variance. And we can calculate it two ways. We can take the difference between the 45,000 and the 36,000. So the number all the way on the left and the number all the way on the right. Or we can take the amounts of the variances that we already calculated. If they're going in opposite directions, like this one is, the unfavorable and the favorable, we subtract them. If they're going in the same direction, so say they were both unfavorable, we would add them. If they were both favorable, we would add them. But when they're the opposite of each other, we subtract them. So this flexible budget variance, I'm just going to show how we can calculate it, because there's two ways. The 45,000 minus the 36,000 or we can take the 15,000 unfavorable and we're going to subtract the 6,000 favorable. Either way, we determine that the total direct material variance, also called the flexible budget variance, is equal to 9,000. Favorable or unfavorable? Well, we already know that the unfavorable was larger than the favorable, so this is unfavorable. And we can see that also. The 45000 is what we actually paid, and the 36000 is what we should have paid. So we did a bad thing for the company. That's unfavorable. So I'm just going to pan out so you can see the whole sheet. So this is the diamond approach to calculating direct material variances. Remember what we're calculating. Did we spend more than expected or less than expected? or exactly the same as expected? Did we use more than expected or less than expected or exactly the same as expected? In this case, we spent too much, but we used a lot less. And don't forget how to calculate the total direct material variances because there are two methods. That's the direct material variances using the diamond approach.